kaya yung sa tinil de katuhan. Siit ka kaya kunahu ke. Ya ku i kaya o kaya katutian. Ya kunah hasa yawat lak. Ya kaji yes. Hasa tin sa kunana aye hasutian. Ka naki aya aye. At that's ak you do a sock and get in a new yak, Kayupit. Ka atling kuu, a kay has with him. Aho ak koa, Kashik at the Hasayawa clock. A jaway way yet look shock you took. Get aya a kaye with him. Ye awako ak kahwasatin koa, get. Ya anushi get the koa, Koneha ka de kapoha. เขาสิทธิ์ว่าคืออ่านนี่เด้อขออ่านโอเคขัดวิธีนะขอเด็กขอเด็กขอเด็กเสกันนั้นสกับไว้เด้อขอเด็กขอเด็กขอเด็กข
Okay, we got to review a few different notes and just see. Let's just do a walkthrough. Okay, so thinking, looking at our notes just to sort of uh, do a bit of a review. Uh, okay. Oh, I don't know if I wrote this right. Okay, so we have uh, Yao. I think that should be Qa. I don't think that should be Yao. We at Tani Kaat Yeta Dune. What do you think that's saying? If it said Qa, I don't think I can edit it. We at Tani Kaat Yeta Dune. You could also say how Kaat Yeta Dune. So I guess we gotta look up Tani, because maybe we need to figure out what that is. So hold on a second. Let's go find Tani. Showed someone my like, tattoo. I was like, oh, my arm is ashy. <laughs> <laughs> but that only happened in the winter. OK. So uh, let me ask you this. How are the vowels arranged in this dictionary? Anybody know? How are the vowels? So if you're looking up. Uh, so the first letter is going to be T apostrophe, right? So, and so we can go over to the left hand, or have your PDF viewer is arranged. You can go to the T apostrophe, which probably looks really tiny for you folks online. I don't know. But then uh, there's Tachdain Tan, and his Tach. Like if, I, if I'm looking for something, I say, OK, that's a high tone, short, long A. First one, first one's short and low. Second one. Sure. Third one. There's only two left. There's a pattern. There's a pattern for sure. Long and low. Long and low, then long and high. So it goes uh, 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 for all the vowels. Anytime you look something up, the vowels are always. And so it's a pretty cool program. Uh, I accidentally updated my computer. I didn't know I was asking for like a whole new system update. And now my dictionary software doesn't work, but I think I have I have a plan. I have a plan. Uh, so then, so here's a low tone. So we're gonna, and here's long and low. So it should be in between these two. So I'm gonna go down. Here's ta. Uh, here's tani. It's a branch. So this one I gotta do a little bit more work on, right? So this is uh, this last week or two I've really gotten into some finer point stuff. Not just the pickling stuff that we'll, we'll get into here. But, um, okay, I gotta show you guys this now. We looked at this thing last night. Oops. Hold on, let me find it. Got the goofiest pictures there. I should have, I should have made a plan here. Hold on. Oh, where is this goofy thing? Okay, fine, fine. How did I put it in there? Oh wait, where did I put it? Okay, I think I know where I put it. There's only four classes left. Does anybody know that? Hmm. Oh, where did you go? Okay, hold on. Bear with me. Okay, here's the tunny. While I'm looking for this stuff, ponder this a little bit more. What do you think it's talking about? <clears throat> Jeez. Okay. We're 
go all over the place. Okay. What is this? Zisco. What's it doing? Uh, just say it in English. Just say it in English. Zisco. Is it like it's acha, yeah. <clears throat> like some kind of yeast, kayani, some kind of like little shoot or something. But if you were to describe that to me in English, what is it? It's eating, yes. But what else is it doing? Is it? I think it has to be. Is it? Are those knees? Yeah. I don't know. I think so. They got four legs. They must have four knees. Right. And so here's, here's an interesting dilemma. Right. So someone texts me this maybe, picture. Maybe the elbows. They say, what is it? Doing? Right. So now I get, <laughs> I get so confused with this stuff. Because are these elbows? Well. They go the other way, right? But, and so like, technically I think this is a knee up here and this is an ankle. Because right? if you count the number of bends, right? But I don't know if it works the same. I'm not, I also, I'm not a biologist. Then when people ask me to say stuff, because let me let me show you the problem. So if you say, okay, well the moose is kneeling to eat a plant. Okay, what if that's what I want to say? So I'll go into uh, the, the verb dictionary. I'm laughing because like every class I think I have too many things open. I need to close some things. I never close some things. Okay, problem reporter, why is that open? There it is. Okay. So now we're going to go look at knee. And then we're going to see how this might not work. So here we have yan tu uwitsu. So there are some interesting things. Anybody know what this? What is this? Anybody recognize this verb root? We know how to say raise one hand. Kende uh, Jin is one way. Is there another way to say? It? Let me show you another way to say it. Um, somehow. What's this thing? Okay. Dogs. Uh, oh, these are notes from yesterday. Okay, there's land back. There's some other cool stuff. Okay, uh, let me zoom way in here. So you could say, You could say kinde ijin. But this is a more direct, this is the verb for saying that. Raise your hand. If I wanted to say, raise two hands, I'd say, Judech ijin. Right. And some of you might have heard this. Right, so that su. Anchkatsu is the name of a place. Right over there. So this su uh, and sak are related. And what they mean is to move stick-like objects. So that's also why you say So tsak is in there. Um, oh, another one. Uh, anybody know what this one means? Let me write it and then I'll say it. I got some cool... It's definitely springtime. Some nice sunshine coming on my face right now. So. This is a command. Dak tsak itlud. It's asking you to do something with your something, right? Anybody know what clut is? Cost has to clut tin. Sayati chukan hasacha. What's that say? 
Hicht wan kanins, heen our shot, a chlut tin. Yes. Dark tak hit chlut. Stick your tongue out. That's how you say that, right? So your tongue is also a stick like object, which is kind of cool, okay? So, sock is to move a stick, essentially. Su is to move multiple sticks. So that's why you're going to go su, su with two hands, sock with one hand. So you can see these sock and su in various different verbs. And so, like, as we learn more and more Shinget, when we come into, when we go look at something, Sometimes, like, I didn't know how to say that, but now I do, and I also know that this is, like, related to some other stuff. So now you get yan tuk yitsu. So tuk is built on there, which is interesting. So I think for tuk, uh, so now let's look at... Uh, deep dive into all the different documents. I think I've shown you folks this. This is a database of nouns. We're just going to go look up uh, tuk just to see if that is a thing. Because that's built right onto the verb. Gun tuk su. So we're going to go to E O O. And you do have tuk ka which you've got something to do with the knee, right? And then tukhada, oops, that's different, sorry. That's from tuk and khada, never mind. It's an area around the, the bottle, okay. Tukh. so here we got kneeling on their knees. And sometimes there's some notes over here, but there's really not a whole lot of notes. So we know that this tukha has to do with being on your knee. So there's something about perhaps the kneecap uh, but we don't really have much else to go on here. There's another, here's another document for deep dives. Uh, it's opening, hold on. Okay. So this is uh, called the Clinkett STEM list. It's made in 1978 by Jeff Lear. And it's a collection of verb roots, but also it's got a lot of nouns in here. So if we look for tu, this is not the easiest thing to read. So we do have tu without the apostrophe, which is different. That's hopping, that's like a flea or a bed bug, one a tu, an ant. Uh, tu is to explode. Tuk. Uh, this is another tuk, which means to become very potent or strong. Tuk is from uh, through the throat. Tuk, low tone, is a needlefish. Tuk, high tone, is a butt. Uh, tuk is to spit out. Tuk, there's a shutuk, is an ankle. So this doesn't give us, I don't think it gives us anything. So look it up. Pictures of Moose kneeling, and that's what it shows. Are you looking for knee? Yeah, I was looking for two. Oh, was that, that, was that not, not handwritten on the bottom? <coughs> Is it? Okay, hold on. Right, right on the bottom of that page. I might have misread it. There it is. It's that one, and then it's again on the very bottom of the page. Knee. Ha! Look at you! So we see that this has something to do, but then. This is where so things get really interesting, coming back to the moves. So then the person who asked me the question, they had already looked all this stuff up. And they said, but I started seeing tuk and started saying knee. And I started wondering, is that actually a knee? Is that, do animals, and I don't know if animals kneel the same, but like this is getting very, but these are getting into the weeds of like what our questions could lead to. So then, I ended up with uh, coming back to this. And then, so this, there's a Tlingit section, and then there's the translation equivalent. So if I go to the translation equivalent, and I go to, so now this is organized by, like, what's the single word?
equivalent in English. And I'm going to look up this forearm. But what about um, so this is uh, like there's so much stuff in Tlingit, right? There's so much. Stuff. There's all these different body parts. I'm uh, trying to figure out what to do with the sunshine. Um, so here's Tsudi, which is a lower forelimb of an animal, right? So this is the lower foreleg. So I think that is a foreleg, F-O-R-E-L-E-G. Anybody know there are most parts in here? What am I looking at? This is how you get like into the into the coot of it all. Okay. So we were we had a plan. Uh, we were looking at a number of different things here. So going through our notes still. So this one, Yao, we at Tani. So I think I got down this wormhole. Because there's also <coughs> she is a big branch. Tani is a smaller branch. And then how is a bow. So this one, ka we at tani ka taking the herring eggs off of the branches. Uh, and so there's a couple different ways you could say this. So let me retype this. Um, and I'll share our notes on here. So I did get a couple different versions of this. Um, so one, this should say ka. I think that was a typo. And then this is taken off of the branches. But you can also say, take it off of it. Either one's fine. Uh, and then this isn't a command form. It's just saying people are doing it. The other thing, uh, just to backtrack a little bit more, and we were looking for to pickle something. So you are ending up with this, this verb. So you do have kashetsukuhin tin. So this is to pickle something. And then uh, to show you how to utilize both of these things. So if we have, uh, let me make some notes here. Raise your arm. Raise both arms. Uh, this is the that temporarily migrated. Uh, well, migrates. Uh, let's see. Oh, Ichish. Uh, there is a verb data sheet where you can look up things by verb root. You can look them up by classifier. You can look them up by conjugation prefix. Stick your tongue out. And then this is remove, removing the herring eggs from a branch. And this one is removing herring eggs from a bow. Oh, damn. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get it all mixed up. Okay. This one is. And then this one is uh, they are pickling it. So. This verb you have, ye adene and ye dadune, are the same verb, right? So this is a verb that's used a lot for working on things, but especially I find it uh, people using it when they're talking about working on foods. So when you get a phrase like this and it's got ye dadune, and we've got a couple of them, 
All right, we've got two different phrases for pickling and for taking herring eggs off the branches. So if we go down, if we go up to ne, um, and then we go down to, uh, here's the verb, ye, uh, object, da, subject, zero classifier, ne. So if we open this, now we can command someone, tin ye da na ne, pickle it. So that would be, you know, how ye da na ne we get the herring eggs off of the uh, off of the bow. Right? So now we can make those into commands, prohibitive. What are you doing? I'm pickling gumboots. Shao tin ye da ne. That's it. Pickling gumboots, right? So you can move the word order around, but once you've got the verb and you recognize it, now you say, oh, that's a verb that I can look up. And this one is conjugated pretty much every which way. So now I could say, we kashizukuhin tin ye That's the pickler. They pickle things, right? Uh, Want to do it in the future? Sure. We're gonna. What are we going to pickle? Shrimp? Sikhat kashizukuhin tin ye degaktu ne. What do you want to do? Say, I, I can't pickle this. Kesh ate ye adan kwa ne ye. We kash le sukhu hin ten. Can't pickle it. Uh oh. Okay. Now my screen is flash. Still okay. 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 Questions? I just had to review our notes because I remember we had some unanswered questions. Oh, database for um, verbs by, by classifier type. And you said conjugation type as well? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, let me find those. Um, oh, we did confirm taikayini as a good name for a cucumber. So it's the sea cucumber on the garden. Uh, yeah, so excellent work, Liz. Uh, let me find those. I, I do, if I remember right, these are ones that I have, but they are a little bit difficult to share because of the format, perhaps. Um, let's see what happens. Okay, so this, this will work. So let me I will try and what I'll do is I'll figure out a way to share these. Uh, so these are HTML files and let me open them then I'll show you what I'm talking about. This does not, so when I was, this goes back, this project goes back probably six or seven years maybe. Um, so the history of it is we had the Clinkit Verb Dictionary, and we had an early version of the Verb Database by Kerry uh, Eggleston. And so what I wanted to do is to type them all up, and so they are all typed up. Uh, these are very tiny, sorry. And so basically what you have is, um, this is a spreadsheet. So in a spreadsheet, you have multiple sort of listings. One is alphabetical, so all of these verbs these verb roots, and this isn't all the verb roots, it's just what was in the verb dictionary and what was in her verb database at that particular time, which is probably half of what it has now. But this is, you can just sort of browse through and see there's more D than CH, there's more G's than those, and you can just sort of scroll down and see which ones have the most, you know, what's the most common letters, and it's going to be K, right? So underlying K is very common. The other K is very common. And there's lots of N, right? But this is one way to look at them. And then what it shows is either the imperfective or progressive imperfective. Then it has the type, the conjugation, prefix, the classifier, the root, the keyword, the definition. So since these are all there, so like this is what the theme, 
And this was a time I was messing around with this idea of putting the conjugation prefix in here in parentheses, which I don't do anymore. But I was trying to say, like, well, let's just put it where it pops up. Uh, but I'm not sure that's the way to do it. So this is organized by stem. This is organized by classifier. So now uh, I won't zoom in, but you can see here's the zero classifier verbs. Lots of them. Lots and lots. Here's uh, the, pl the plus D of the zero classifier. Quite a few. Here's the S. Quite a few. S plus D, not very many. L. Lots. L plus D, not very many. SH, hardly any. SH plus D, hardly any. So this shows you like the zero is by far the most common classifier. And then the last one is by conjugation prefix. So again, here's the zero going down. Lots of them. Here's ga, quite a few. Here's ga, not very many. And here's na, whole bunch. And then here's one, I didn't know what these ones were because these, these are from the verb dictionary. I could probably go review, update this data at some point. But this does exist. And so what I'll do is I'll put links up to these. These are HTML files. I should be able to, I'll see, I'll see how they load. But if all else fails, I'll put the, I'll go find the, the spreadsheet and put those up so you guys can have them. For your verb analysis, geek out. Gnastish. Ah. Oh, Gnastish. Yeah, so here is. So looking at this and <clears throat> looking at the other one, this is a back foot, back mm -hmm. leg. The front, the front leg is similar. It's an arm, I guess. It's they, they consider it an arm in the front. I mean, because okay. it's, it's like a, a it's the tibia um, in the back for our legs, and then the front of the animal is the um, the what is it? The humerus and the um, what's the other one? I, I forgot it now. Is that front front leg bones? <clears throat> Front forearm bones, is that radius? Right? The radius, the radius is your forearm bone. <clears throat> so the radius and the ulna okay. is the forearm bone. And so is it so, elbowing? So it's it's the wrist. It's, it's actually the wrist. So it's actually the wrist that's it's on its down. So when it kneels forward, it it's, it's up, the on, wrist. up on his toes or it's up on his fingers basically. The fingers have like the um the, the toenails are the finger are our fingernails. So if you uh -huh. imagine our fingernails are like the toenails, it's up on his tippy toes or tippy fingers. So its elbow is way then, up here, right? Yeah, the elbow is up there. So it's kneeling down on his wrist. So the wrist is Whoa. forward. So that's what's that's what's that's what it's it's doing is the wrist is coming forward, and then this part of it is up further, and then the shoulder is like way up. So. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So it's its wrist, and then the backbone, the back one is sticking out, the, the back legs, so the pointy ones look like they're pointing backwards for the back legs. Uh -huh. On the back, that's the, the heel. Yeah, right? Right, yeah. See, because I, I first thought of this as doing form lines. <clears throat> I was trying to draw a wolf, and I was having a real hard time with the shape of its leg. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at my dog, and I was thinking, what are those things then? Because I could see it bends this way. And just to get to try and replicate the anatomy in a drawing was difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jeez. So it's a whole nother word then to not kneel. It's not kneeling. Right. <laughs> it's like, so I, I end up saying it bent its forearms and lowered its head. And then they had there was a speaker there and they asked, and like this is some stuff where like we should have been working on these puzzles 20 years ago because there's some of this stuff we can ask some folks but we might have to manufacture ways to talk about it which but even it's interesting too because in english you would just say it's kneeling like i think that's what you would say like everybody asked i asked they said that moose is kneeling but it it can't kneel technically right but that's getting very technical because his knees are way up here yeah and, and it can't get onto those. And the front is actually considered, and, and as far as the anatomy goes, 
its arms. I mean, it's talking about the arm bones in the front and the leg bones in the back. <clears throat> so uh, the front, those front legs, those are arms, really. So mm -hmm. yeah, so it's like basically going yeah on its wrists. Wrist. Okay. It's too much. <laughs> I, uh, I guess it's a good point that we should have brought it up previously because we're also we are examining it using Western science in their way of describing things. Because I think it has different words for the front hose and the back hose. Yeah. It has different words for the front legs and the back legs. Like it has whole different words. And but like I don't think a lot of people, even hunters, use terms like four legs, right? And back legs. I, I guess you'd say hind quarter. You would call this a hind quarter. But I don't really hear people if I say, hey, what do you call this part? I say, I don't know, back leg, front leg, right? That's usually what you'd say, right? I think. Okay, you guys gotta just walk around with a picture of a moose and just stop people randomly and say, what you call this? What you call that? And then show them this picture and say, what is this one doing? <laughs> okay. Good cheese. The heels are so high up. We had two days of immersion before the Kuik, so I'm I'm extra punchy. We had really good, really good sessions. Um, just really beautiful moments with some folks. Peo to Ish, Herman Davis, Coach Ta and Johnson, Ka Nak Ruth Demert, Kaka Shat, Florence Shakley, and Shawat Khan. So we had like several speakers who were there. And um, there was a lot of stuff going on in Sikkist. And then there was like this volcano erupting. So it was a bit of a hectic time, but it was really good stuff. OK. We should do this. We haven't done this in a long time. We gotta translate this. Oh, somebody read it. Not me. Somebody read it. Sounds in my eyes. I can't. <coughs> she brought a baseball cap. Okay. Yeah, it's thing to put a vowel in between it. It's just no. <coughs> Okay, what do we got here? If we need to look into resources, we can. Dr. Hidi, towards the store, day, um, day of walking. Well, we got we are traveling here. Okay. What kind of what kind of verb are we looking at? We know it's the walking one, right? Is it future? It's future. They will travel. Let me show you what they will. So if we did they, we'd have that. We haven't done this yet. I will. Yeah, that's right. right. So double K is going to cut off is me every time. Every time. Every time. So if you want to say um, me, future, you're going to have kukha. Or you're gonna have kukwa. Okay, keep the chat up. And then, um, oh, gonna teach you right after the break. So then, what about a they future? What's that gonna look like? They both got changed. Everybody know? We haven't done it yet, so I'm just testing the waters. Jigging. Jigging for answers. That's got to change. That's got to change. If we take the ch out of it, this is what we end up with. And then this one goes like that. And there's whole systems as to why, right? And it all comes down to uh, there being ga, u, ka in there. So I would say this is the natural sort of form of that. Ga, u, ka, that's what you're going to get. It's gukla. But then if you put ka in there, then it's going to change both of those, which is wild. This one changes to a k, that one changes to an underlying k. The underlying k one, that's a pattern you're going to see. It's going to make sense. Ach eat, 
tradition, right? You're gonna, you're gonna see this. Um, okay. And then what's qatlqa? Did we get that part? Oh, look, I can almost get in the shade. I don't know. Going oh, after pilot bread. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's just seeing it with that suffix on there. I am going to go to the store for pilot bread. I'm a gonna. Okay. How would I say this? Say this and we can take a break. They wove three chill cat blankets. Singular they. Feel free to throw any single words out that you think are going to be in this sentence. Do, maybe do. Um, maybe not Kane. I'll be in there. Because it's, we're going to have a verb, I don't, I don't think we're going to have do because we don't see T H E I R. Not zero. It's gonna be. A, it is gonna be a zero. <coughs> yeah. For them. Natsk. Natsk. Where do you think we should put it? I, I would guess right there, right before the Nachain. Well, that's a great spot for it. Natsk Nachain. Now we have three chilkat blankets. Uh, all we need is a verb. Where do you think we should go? Tell me where to go and I'll go there. Khan Kalanik Verb database. Let's go verb database. All right. Love going the verb database. Okay, I'm looking for not safari. <laughs> There it is. Okay. So we go back to here. Uh, let me let's close this. Let's go all the way up to the top, and we'll go do find, and we're gonna look for weave. Oh, look at that! It just pops right up because this thing is smart. So if I open this up. And I see to make cloth of any kind by weaving, knitting, or crocheting, to make or mend a net. And I would say this one needs some, I would put one additional thing in here, which would be to weave with yarns. This is weaving with yarns. There's another weaving, which is with bark. So this is the verb we're looking for. Object. K, which is the horizontal service, subject, S classifier, so S or S, ne, it's a na act. So if this is a perfective, this is a perfective. So let me show you. So if I had all this stuff here, we're going to switch back to our long and low. It's going to be long and low, right? So we're actually going to put this stuff right in here. So the na tells us, we can get rid of that that it's gonna be just like that. That's what the root's gonna look like. If it happened, what should the classifier look like? They did it. SI. And we look, we're constructing it. It's a third person, so that should be zero. But if that's zero, what should the object be? A. Thing. Yep, that's ready. That can actually go away. A W. Boom! That's how you build a verb right there. Nask nachin a kausenik. This is our prediction. Did we get it? Boom! It didn't change at all. Okay, okay. So like, you can like. So we just did that stuff as like a step by step. But if you do this stuff enough, your brain will be able to put these processes together very fast. Just by like, but it's really interesting, I think, learning Shinget as a second language, because you have to sort of store this information. Okay, like, okay, so there's zero, 
then there's na, ga, ga. We're dealing with perfectives, and we're going to look at this. We've got three classes left after today, so we're going to spend some time like doing a few of these translations, helping out with any other projects that you folks have, but we're going to take a look at, I'll at least give you the resources to say, this is how you learn you can learn how to build perfectives with futures. Because if you could do those two, you can do an awful lot of talking. You're bossing people around and telling them do and don't, that's a little bit trickier. Getting into like the whole can't do it, that's way trickier. Let, let them do it, it is trickier. So, okay. Any questions before we take our break? Um, what's the final? Ooh, what did we say we we're gonna do? We said something about you picking a story and then us reciting. Yeah, why don't why don't we do? But you never said what. We did a lot with the talk a story. What if you all just can't? And like, we'd all be doing the same thing, right? But here's one idea, and I'm open to other ideas. And I know we only got two weeks until we're done. Right? Two weeks from today, hoochie aye, right? I don't want to stress anybody out. Um, there's a whole bunch of stories, including Tanka. Uh, and I can, let's see, what can I do? There's Tanka, So there's a whole bunch of stories, okay? What if you just told a very condensed version of a story, maybe 20 sentences long? <clears throat> Would you do that? Just ooski version of a story. And it's fine if you just sort of memorize the, we've got the Tonka, that initial version of it. I'll share with you uh, a short version of a story called Sahan. So let me harvest a couple stories and put them up. And that and then you'll have 10 to 14 days to just, you'll do your best to memorize it. Okay, so try and commit it to memory. I think that would be plenty. And then what we do is two weeks from today, we get together and we listen to everybody tell stories and we clap and cheer and Take a little break. Does that sound manageable? Anybody want to riot over that? Wouldn't be the first time I came up with something at the last minute. So, but I remember one semester, it was like, it was the last week of classes, and I gave, and I sent out this email. I was like, hey, let's do this big, complicated thing. And then I parked up here, and I was walking down to my office, and I saw this big group of students walking very, in my mind, I think they had pitchforks and torches, and, and they were coming at me. And so I said, I want my lawyer. That was what I said really loud. Then well, we just negotiated, and everybody, I don't want to stress anybody out, but I do like to have sort of a, a bit of a thing that we do. And you know what? Nobody's graded on anything. I never grade anybody on anything when it comes to learning Shingen. If you show up and you do the work, then everybody, you just get an A. Everybody gets an A, because like, Shingen is, Tough enough. We don't have to worry about grades. Okay. Sound okay? Questions, thoughts, concerns? I don't care if you tell the same story. Doesn't matter. If you want to pick a story and work with, and if you want to, uh, we can collaborate and come up with a 20 sentence version of any story you want. I prefer it's a Tlingit story, though. I want, well, I want to know three little pigs. I want to know, we, did, we were talking about this in class yesterday. I think a cow, a pig, and a sheep have almost the same name in Klinkit and Haida and Simshan. So there is a benefit, I guess, of sticking with some of the stories that have those things in it. And then I'll also, before we take a break, I'll say, I'm sure I told you this before, but one time Richard Downhauer was famous for translating, I don't know what you call them, fairy tales? So like, he did like Goldilocks, and he did, you know, just a bunch of little stories like that. <clears throat> he did Peter Cottontail, which he translated as Peter Cotton Coo, 
Does anybody know why that would get the elders really laughing? Peter, cotton, cool. Is that the fish tail? It's the fish tail, right? So it should be Peter cotton shady. And so all the elders just pictured a rabbit with like a fish tail. Because there's two words for tail. There's a long kind, which I guess is also a little puffy kind. And then there's the a bird or a fish, so the long flat kind, and a beaver. Okay, uh, come back at ten tail. We'll switch it up and do something a little different. And we might do a couple more translations. We'll see. They're always fun. Yachish. Okay, good uh, Uh Let's take a look at an interactive kind of editing session. Uh, let's see. I need to zoom in. How do I do that? Okay. Uh, so can I help you uh, count? I think I added you as an editor, but I have uh, your last oh, one. I'm signed in as the wrong person. Okay, hold on. Maybe it's another one. So there we go. Is it trouble to grade in there? No. Uh, so no, this is, I'm on. Oh, I just so so uh, can I help you? Um, anybody know how to say can I help you? Eat get kadeshi. So this is. Uh, it's a hortative verb, and so it kadeshi would be let me help you. It kadeshi is can I help you? And then, uh, like the count, as in the character. The Muppets, the cut, count Muppets. There's a there's a link above the you know the hot link, but it's like the you know the Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, <clears throat> what can I do? Uh, so there's this thing. Um, I think we got to figure out how to use a little bit more. Uh, that's what can I do? And so this there's a. Uh, Yishqa by um, Yakhwan Tla. So uh, let's go to this. Let's go to the source. So we go to the Raven Book. It's huge. Even when I close the Raven Book, like it takes a little while. Computers really got to think about it. Uh, under the table of contents, we're going to go to. Let me zoom in on this. So this is organized into what we call um, which is a raven cycle. So that means there's a bunch of stories told. Technically, I think they're told one right after another. But Yakhwantla, I think, has several smaller recordings. But because there's so many of them, I would consider it Yekhutla. Uh Her telling of Raven and the King Salmon, uh, which is here, there's a line here where he says, what can I do uh, to that king salmon to trick him into coming ashore? This is a little bit different. So what the oosh does here is um, if only. It kind of means if only. Like you could say, yisiku oosh, if you only knew. So wasa ush, in this case you have khwasane, uh, but I would probably say wasa ushe khwasane. What could I possibly do? Is really what you're ending up with. Mm -hmm. But if you're using this construction, your second, this is complicated, your second is a hortative, right? And so th there's probably some, there's a lot more to it to unpack, um, but we're not going to unpack it now. We'll just say, uh, oosh is a neat thing. I do think I do think it's listed in here with maybe some examples, but 
Let me double check. Oh, where am I going to find the double O vowel? If I were to alphabetize this, the way it's alphabetized in this dictionary. Does it come right after N? The answer is no. Would it be after the one O? Which would be, there's not a one O, but no. yes. That's the short version of the double O vowel. <laughs> not an O. <laughs> I can't think of that. I know, it's okay. It's a U. Yeah. So we're going to go down to the T apostrophe, then we get to the TS and TS apostrophe. Here's the U vowels high tone U, high tone O, high tone long O. Uh, and then una, un Dutch, usk. Uski, do I have it? Oosh, right? So this said, uh, so what I need to do is find some more examples of this because it, it is if only um, as if, but I want to find a few more examples uh, to put in here. So in this case, I would say, coming back, wasa ushi kakosene. If, if you said, and this is like, um, what can I do, is what I'd say, oops. I'm just going to make some notes in this document. Because if I wanted to say, uh, if you say, wasa yeka kwasane, which I hear a lot of speakers, they'll say, wasa yeka ka. Right, so these are questions. Right? So now these, these are all, all three of these are questions. Um, what, could I, what could I possibly do? Is how I'd sort of think of that. And also, I think the, the implication here is to help. Right? Mm -hmm. What could I possibly do to help? <laughs> yeah. Right. So you could say, so the other thing that you could end up with here is you might end up with something that's not because the English, like the actual words that are there, sometimes are just different concepts in Tlingit, right? So if you said wasayekakwasane, what are you kind of asking here? What do you think? What will I do? It's pretty close. It's pretty close. But you're, yeah, it's what will I do? But I think you're also going to say, how am I going to do it? Right? Which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Because if you say, how am I going to say it? Or, but you know, I think this is also the equivalent of what am I going to say? Because I, I, I'll catch speakers say this when they're kind of running out of ideas and what. Mm -hmm. Or, or they might say, how am I going to say that? And then they'll usually put it together in their mind. So I think, wa sa i de kakwadashi. How am I going to help you? It just kind of depends on what's being asked. So there's plenty of cases where we're going to find the thing that requires just a few more specifics. Uh, I want to answer my phone so I can look for things to count. I want you to answer my phone. Oh, I want you to answer my phone. Okay. So the over on the, the far left, it's it's a dialogue. E is Ernie and C is count. Oh, okay. And so it's like a back and forth kind of. But. So I would say because you could have answered the phone, but I think you're going to end up, in some cases, we're just going to simplify some things. Aktuwasagu. Um, I, I guess what is. I want to. What is going on? <laughs> uh, if you would like, you could. 
you could you could broad click this link up above. It's a it's like a one minute or it's like a one minute video clip. Wait, hold on. So my intent and my hope is I, I I see all these cartoons and videos and things from other languages that are translated into different things and I'm. <laughs> It's, uh, it's very nice of you to give me a job helping you, Count. Uh, what would you like me to do? I want you to answer my telephone so I don't have to be bothered while I look for things to count. Oh, so maybe, okay. I miss, maybe I miss one. Okay, I thing. want so you I won't to... be bothered, I guess, is, is maybe the... Okay. I guess an important piece maybe there. <coughs> <clears throat> Let's see... At So this is uh, okay. So like so. So we're gonna we're gonna find the look for, uh, and we're gonna use uh, this one, akakushi, and then we're gonna go down, and we're going to just look at a hortative form. So you're gonna have akakunkashi, and if we copy that. So this is the first person hortative. If we don't know how to put it together, we can copy it from this. And luckily, this one is uh, already put together for us. And we go back to here, and then we'd say, aqa kun kashi. And then, uh, the first we're going to add this, yit. And when we add the it, in this case, it's going to be well, it's, we're adding this letter T. We're adding the T as a suffix. But sometimes you need to have a vowel, and sometimes you need to have Y-I-T, because this ends with uh, a vowel. So if it ends with a vowel, we got to put yit on there. So aqaqun qashiyit. So what that translates to in meaning is so I can look for it. But if we're looking for something to count, you're going to say dustuwu at ka kun kashiyit. I want you to talk to people on the phone so I can look for things to count or look for something to count. I know you're supposed to say ah, ah, ah. What's that? Oh. <laughs> yeah, the count. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I do have a video of my daughter when she's probably three. And she goes, Kayak, Dech, Nusk, Dagun, Kajin, Kaydushu, Dachadushu, Nuskadushu, Gushuk, Jinkat. Ha, 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 ha. That's how she does. <laughs> She does that, that, that's that's so cool, man. It's very cute. Um, and then answer the phone. Is that all? So again, I would say probably we could. This is one where we're probably just going to say talk to people on the through the phone. Um, and and interesting enough, though, I mean, throughout the video, he never gets to talk to anybody. So. so he just wants them to it basically just like lift the phone up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what if uh, we so say? I mean, he, he. But I think he's meaning to answer the phone, but really just to. Anyway, he, he never gets to talk to anybody. What if we just said, "Watch the phone"? 
right? Because that's what he wants. He wants you to, to watch the phone to be ready to answer it if it rings, right? Is that what he's saying? Like, Yeah, he's giving him a job to answer his phone. Little secretary? And he's like, all right, well, I'll answer your phone. And then eventually it does ring. And he's like, oh, it's ringing. I'll, I'll get it. But then he's like, no, 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 don't get it. I want to answer the rings. And he's like, no, but you told me to help you. I want to get the phone. He was like, no, 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 that's two uh... rings. And he was like, but your phone's ringing. I'm helping you. He was like, no, no, wait, that's three rings. And then so... Ernie is is like really trying to help by picking up the phone and answering it, but mm -hmm. he keeps pushing him away and saying, "Not yet, not yet. I'm not done counting." <clears throat> so you would end up so with. <laughs> it's gonna get complicated. It, yeah. Anyway. So you, I want you to pick up the phone if it rings. Right, because that's what you're gonna end up right. with. <clears throat> right. Okay. So you're gonna end up with Achtuasuku we Kahis Yetini. And then But I was thinking like if 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 so if 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 it for learners, I mean who has a regular phone anymore in their home? I don't know. Right? But so I mean most learners and most people are I mean you, you might pick up the phone actually to answer it because it might ring so, so it's, it still may work like if right. you're picking up a phone to answer it like a cell phone like if, if, if you were to equate it into having that sentence make sense in, in today's world <laughs> do you have a home phone i don't my grandma still has a home phone really yeah i still do you do do yeah. i mean we did up until we moved down here well even when we lived here, I think we had one for a little while, but then they made me pay fifteen dollars a month, and I never used it. Yeah. I never that I had to pay for it, and I never used it. Okay. We kahis chatlatini Okay. Problem with these Google Docs too is they don't like the combined characters. This one. Nothing else. Oh, that is enough. Um, Ah, ah, That's sufficient. Ke guchlitzi. That's guchlitzi. Ge. Ah. You can rely on me. Ach ka again de tak kota. Where did you find that one? Is it under rely? Um, it might have been. I do think you'll end up with this. Ach, ach, tade. It took a jock. I find the count. So 
then I think you'd say dot Oh, no, I think you'd say dot kach sa kuk kwa shi. And then you're going to get at na kas tu wit. What can I find so I can count? Like, like, gal with the ring. So that's a ring. I don't know. I was thinking <clears throat> something like, but I, I may have it off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because it's a ring. Oh, the ring. So in this case, I think you're going to end up with. So in English, um, you would have one ring, but I think in Tlingit you would have Tlai um, Dahin. Oh, okay. It rang once. And then we kahis aya shwutikwal. You could say khach. I'll lift it up. But then I think you're going to have to have ah on there. I will pick it up off of it. But then you're probably going to have that. It's a complex object. That's the phone ringing me. So this chach is, uh, I'm going to do it. It's chat plus the ch, chach. So these are ones, um, chach is what you get for chat, which is I. The subject is really what you're saying. And what if you're the subject? Anybody know how to say that? If it's chet with the high tone, what should it be for you? Okay, we're going to put this one on the notes, okay? This one should be it. And the subject for the, the pronoun? So the CH thing is an ergative marker. We use it when we need to clarify like who is doing the thing, right? Bunch, we saw that. So we have, um, in this case, chach. So I am doing it, right? So this is how you clarify, like I'm going to do it. What about you? How do we change chet? It's the U version. Oh, it's like the second is like a I or E or I, I. Chet with the high tone. Oh, what? Oh, oh. oh what? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that's right, the high tone. Right. <clears throat> uh, what about they are the subject? Hmm. Yeah. 
good. What about we are the subject? Why? Can I have something else? Lunch. You can do it with all of these. What about y'all are the subject? Same thing you just did with that. I need uh, we we do <clears throat> punch. And they all are the subject. Let's go way back to independent pronouns. Chet, eh, huh, Wuhan, Yuhan, Hush. Okay. Chach. I'm going to do it. What H? So, like, uh, what do you think? What do you think this is then? What H should qua? You first? Yes. Okay. Maybe just one more, then I can I can look at this later. Then. Mm, no, I won't count them. Uh yes, I will count them. Click. So this is where you'd probably say plague. And then probably going with hatch. Go with cook platoon. Way stagwash. I'll count the rings. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we only got 10 minutes left. Um, any thoughts or questions? I was going to show something else. Might be a little late to start it, but we will start it. Okay, we'll do more translations on Thursday. Uh, I want to start this thing uh, because this is, this is the last thing we'll do this semester, and it's going to take a little bit of time to get sort of into this. So, Kind of a bit of a culmination of all these things is uh, this presentation here, which I'm trying to resize so it fits in my window. Okay. So object and subject combinations, but this is actually covers quite a bit more than that. But this is putting all the pieces together, changing the object, changing the object, changing the subject, starting to conjugate the verb, and really think about putting the perfective together. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that we have used to look at verbal structure, right? So thinking about verbs, there's preverbs, there's the object, the thematic, conjugation, subject, classifier, stem, suffix, and postverb. The biggest thing I think right now is building a prefix. If you can build a prefix, you can really say a lot of stuff. You really can. Because the stem, you will figure that part out. But if you got the stem wrong, uh, people would still know what you're doing if the prefix is right. right? If you say, people will understand what you're trying to say. And they'll say, oh, right? so it's fixable. That last part is fixable. And everything's fixable, but getting this prefix pretty close to accurate in terms of being able to predict it opens the door to speaking. Because then you'll see there's certain things that combine when you have the classifier and then these object-subject combinations, right? And the subject affects things more because it's so close, you know, the object is really at the edge of things. And so the subject is right here next to the classifier. So it tends to affect the conjugation a lot more. And when we say conjugation, that means changing these components and figuring out how they interact with one another. So 
this is one way to look at things. And there is uh, a little handbook that I've been working on that explains what every single one of these things are. Uh, oh, I've gotten it up to, I think, up to here. So over, by the end of the summer, I think I'll have the, little, the handbook done. But what the handbook is supposed to go hand in hand with is how to put the verbs together to finally start to sort of really unlock this stuff and say, we've done a lot of this stuff, we've talked about perfectives and zero conjugation, what that means for a perfective, but now we're going to start seeing them in action. So another way that we can sort of look at this is thinking of things as like, these are also kind of like a switchboard, right? So what this shows you is all these different things that might be there and where they're sort of going to be. This is just another type of illustration to think about it, to say you have these switches that you can activate so the light can turn on to say yes, we're using something in this spot. And so like for example, if you're going to build a perfective verb, the, the light will come on for the object if there's an object there. The light will come on for the subject if there's a subject there, which is it's told to you in the theme. Like we did one earlier, earlier where it said Object, k, subject, s classifier, nay, for weaving, right? But if we zoom way in here, the thing that we're really thinking about right now is these three, these four spots right here. These four switches have to do with the conjugation, right? So if you're going to start moving a verb into the perfective, this is where the perfective marker lives. There's these four possible spots where you could activate something. For a perfective, the only one you turn on is the perfective marker, which lives on this spot. So I, I did this little thing with switches to show, like, these things all live in the same space, so you can only have one of them. This thing, there's only one thing right there. There's only one thing right there. There are three different things here two different things here. If you want to build a future verb, this light has to come on, you have to have ga. This light has to come on, you have to have u. And then this light has to come on, and you have to have ga. That is needed for the future. For a perfective, the only thing that's needed is y, which lives right here. Also for a perfective, the other thing is sort of thinking about the classifier. The classifier can be of one of four groups, so you can set the group right here. Then you can add the letter D, or you can add the letter I. For a positive perfective, we are going to add the letter I. So for a perfective verb, the only things that you change on this like board, which you could also think of right here, is you're going to activate this perfective marker, y, which is right here, and you're going to say we are only going to deal with the plus i version of the classifier, because it has happened. Y, d, s, z, l, d, sh, j. It has to be one of those. You cannot have one of these if it's a positive perfective, because it has already happened. Any questions about that stuff? So thinking about the relationship of the classifier and verb modes, right? So these are, I guess I could do it. How am I going to do this? Oh, I'm not going to deal with it. Okay, I'll deal with it some other time. I'm going to update this illustration so it only shows. Well, I guess it does. Okay. Most of the verb modes are minus i. That means I would say it's the default mode of the classifier. Nothing's been altered. A classifier, the zero classifier is a zero. The S classifier is S. The L classifier is S. The SH classifier is SH. So I want you to think of those as that's its natural state. That's, the, that's how it's born. If you want to change it to say it's happened, then it becomes Y, S, S, SH. If you need to add the letter D to talk about this middle voice thing, it's an object and a subject, then you're going to end up with you know, going down to the plus D versions. 
So looking at these, these are called verb modes. We have imperfective, progressive imperfective, then, and so we have positive and minus too. So is doing it, uh, does it, not doing it, uh, does not do it. And there's also like is and isn't that way. Uh, in the process of doing it, the negative perfective didn't do it or didn't become that way. The imperative, which is the command form, the habituals, positive and negative, the future, positive and negative, the hortative, repetitive, imperfective, potential, decessive, conditional. Those are all minus I classifier modes. So if you ever deal with those modes, you know the classifier has to be zero, da, sa, s, sha, sh, sha, sh. It has to be that. Right, so whatever the classifier group is, then you know what the classifier is going to be for those modes. The only time it goes plus I, only time ever, state imperfectives is that way. Yannik, Klitsin, Klitschan, all of those, right? And, and so we, it has to be that way to be that way. So the plus I usually says, the verb is that way, or the verb did happen. All positive perfectives have to be plus I. There's this interesting call, thing called repetitive state imperfectives, which these, these are more advanced things, but if you run into something that says you chayatunk, the ya is the classifier and it's plus I. You chayatutli etk, well, it probably, well, we're conversing talking right and that's uh, potentials are kind of weird things might do it might not do it no way they can do it would have done it is also a potential uh, and those are also plus I for some reason but this is what these are the verb modes that you will eventually you'll learn how to do some of these I think if you go back a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, like if you if you're dealing with like quite a few of these verbs, everybody could do them. Everybody could do most of these. When you got into like some really strange, like the conditionals and the potentials and stuff, that's maybe like one out of every ten people can use these really advanced verb modes. Storytellers, song composers, orators speech makers, you know. So that's what we're looking at. We're going to start looking at the perfective, right? We're going to get into stem types. We're going to get into looking at how all these things start to interact with each other. And then we're going to get into what is the perfective and what are the things we need to know to build a perfective verb. But we're out of time now, so we have to do it on Thursday. Anything else before we go? A lot. That's a lot in 10 minutes. I'm going to do a little bit more on Thursday. I'll just clarify. You said you'll put the <clears throat> final like, rubric up tonight? Sometime. Yes. It's tell a 20-sentence story. Okay. That's all it is. Tell a 20-sentence story. And I'll, put some, I'll start putting some examples up. If you pick a story, like if you say, I want to do Natsa Shane in 20 sentences, I can help you compose those 20 sentences. And we can cook it down. There's been a few that we've already cooked down to like a 20 sentence version. So that's that's what I think we should do. It's just tell a 20 sentence story. If you want to do 30, you can't. But try to get to 20. Okay. And I'll start, yeah, I'll start putting them up. So if you look at our page, clinkitlanguage.com, learning Clinkit Intermediate Clinkit, uh, towards the top you'll start seeing, you'll see something probably by tonight that says, or maybe by tomorrow, we'll see. It says final, and then there'll be in a description of what you're going to do, and then I'll start putting some examples of some 20 sentence stories up there. Okay, Johan. Good luck. 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 Um, they want me to record some thing it, and I just wanted to make sure I got all the sounds right. I feel pretty confident in reading, but I wanted to just run it by you. 
Um, yeah, probably uh, maybe tomorrow morning, maybe Thursday. Tomorrow, uh, 